Now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, APECGO.com. The results show when the athletes hit the field. With us right now from Gigham 247, it's Aubrey Bloom. How you doing, Aubrey? Doing good. How are you today? Doing very well. Have you recovered from National Signing Day? <laughs> yeah, well, sort of. You know, down here in Texas, the cycle goes so early that really we're already gearing up for the, the next signing day. So uh, there's not really much of a break for us. That's insane. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. That's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think last year A and M had 18 commitments by June. Good. So night. really, we our break is kind of late summer to where most people's is about right now. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about the 2013 signing class. First of all, what were the needs going in? Well, I think the biggest need for A and M was in the front seven on defense. Certainly, a linebacker, especially with with graduating two guys and not really having anybody behind them that's proven. So that, that was the biggest need, and one they addressed, a had six linebackers in the class, four of which are already enrolled. They came in a midterm. Okay, and so uh, talk a little bit about the guys that signed. Uh, I know it's a huge class. It's an unusually huge class uh, for a number of reasons. One, uh, someone didn't sign a lot of guys last year. Uh, and so let's talk about the, the overall quality of the class as well as the quantity. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the big thing is people get obsessed with players at the top, but what's really impressive about this A&M class is just the depth of quality player. You know, especially at positions like we talked about linebacker already, but at defensive line, A&M signed six guys, and at wide receiver, A&M signed a number of playmakers, including their best overall prospect by the rankings, which is Ricky Seals-Jones. So uh, that's an area where they got several guys that could be big guys. They got Sebastian LaRue out of California, to kind of fill Ryan Swope's void in the slot. Uh, Jaquay Williams is a big-time receiver uh, out of Georgia. He went to prep school in Virginia, but but he's another big target for Johnny Manziel there on the outside. And I think that's when you're looking for playmakers and guys that you're going to be reading about in the headlines, that's what, that's the position the Aggies did the best at was probably a wide receiver. All right, and of these of the guys that are signed, you mentioned some already, but who are some of the immediate impact players along with Ricky Seals-Jones? Well, I think you look at the defensive tackles, Justin Manning and Isaiah Golden could both be called on to be you know, immediate players at defensive tackle. You know, A&M had, A&M had a, a defensive end that was a true freshman start this past year in Julian Ovioha, and I think they might have maybe two true freshmen starting a defensive tackle at times this year, depending on what happens with the Kirby Ennis situation. So that's the two guys that can be called on right away. Uh, possibly Deshaun Hall, the defensive end, uh, could get in there pretty early on because, you know, behind um, DeMontre Moore, there was no real set pass rusher as a backup. There were some guys there, but none of them really showed the ability to get to the quarterback, and that's what Deshaun Hall could bring. So there's a chance he could get on the field early, but then obviously all of the wide receivers have a chance. Everybody from Sebastian LaRue to Ricky Seals-Jones to Jaquay Williams, uh, all of those guys are going to have a chance to get on the field pretty quickly. One guy that we're real interested in here in East Texas is Isaiah Golden. What's the plan for him? You know, Golden is a guy that, uh, you know, it very well could be starting when, when the season starts uh, a defensive tackle. That's what, he's a big kid. You know, someone talked about the fact that, you know, Golden and Manning are both already bigger than Spencer Neely ever dreamed about being. So, you know, he's a guy that could get on the field pretty early on if, if things uh, – kind of break his way, and he comes in, you know, ready to get to work this fall. So all said, did they come away with anything? Are there still any holes now in the in the Aggie signing uh, class? I think if you're going to pick out a hole, they probably could have used more offensive linemen. They only signed a couple of guys there, and, and that's something that they really need um, to start back building. They have a lot of depth on the offensive line, but they didn't sign, you know, many big guys last year, and they didn't sign hardly any this year. So that's going to be a big key. 2014, in fact, they've already picked up an offensive lineman for 2014, is to kind of stockpile some players at that position, especially at tackle. Okay, and what does it feel like then to have a top 10 class but be ranked like sixth in the SEC? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's the kind of the reality of it. I think all 14 SEC teams were in the top 30, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of how it is. You get, you got to find your guys and, and, and do, you get the best out of them. That's the key in the SEC is you know everybody's going to have players. The key is getting the most out of the players uh, is going to be big. Because, yeah, you look at A&M, uh, you know, I think they were 10th on a 24-7 sports team rankings, but 
you know, fifth in the SEC and fourth in the SEC West. Wow. Uh, LSU, Ole Miss, and Alabama all finished ahead of them. So it's uh, a pretty wild uh, year for the SEC in recruiting. It's got to be great, though. Aggies have got to be loving what's happening right now with uh, with what's going on with Sumlin and the program when you see what's happening over in Austin right now where it just seems like they're hemorrhaging right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, Texas was always going to sign a fairly small class, and Matt Brown can play it off every once. But the big thing was they lost several players that they really wanted late in the process to schools like Baylor, which, you know, in the past just doesn't happen. You know, Texas lost a couple guys down the stretch that ended up committing to Baylor. And, you know, that's a thing that if that's a sign of, of what's going on in Austin, then things are going to change for next year because they ended up with a class that, you know, it's decent. I think it's a top-20 class, but it doesn't have any of the playmakers that, you know, really they thought they were going to get a year ago. Uh, did you guys lose anybody that you thought you were going to get? Uh, and A&M signed all, uh, all 32 guys they expected to wow. sign. So they picked up one on signing day in Deshaun Hall, but they signed everyone they expected to. So nobody flipped. Correct. They didn't lose anybody on signing day. That's incredible. All right, and one other question uh, having to do with quarterback. Uh, Kenny Hill of South Lake Carroll, it looked like he might be a little nervous about coming to A&M because Manziel is going to be around for a while, uh, and then he decided to go ahead and sign. Uh, and also Cole Stewart. What's the chances Cole Stewart's ever going to end up on campus? You know, I think the chances are, are pretty good that he ends up on campus at some point. You know, uh, Kevin Sumlin alluded to this yesterday in this press conference. He said, you know, that – you know, if you want to be Brandon Whedon, that works too. So Cole Stewart, you know, I think even if he doesn't come this summer, he could go off and do the baseball thing, but he comes from an, an Aggie family. And should the baseball thing not work out for him, then I think you would see him back at A&M at some point. You know, like a lot of players have gone on to do that. Yeah, so he could so be 28 think, and play quarterback then. Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think eventually Cole Stewart, you know, if the baseball thing doesn't work out, he'll end up on campus at some point. But – you know, Kenny Hill is the one that really fits a and system and a guy that may not be rated that high, you know, by the, you know, the recruiting sites, even like ours, he's just inside the top 250, but is a, a perfect fit for what, what A&M is trying to do on offense. And, you know, he's a special kind of playmaker. And how many commitments do you already have from the 2014 class? Uh, A&M has seven to 20, uh, 2014 right now. Jeez, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, all right, uh, Aubrey, thanks very much. Tell us what we can look for in the uh, coming days on Gigum 247. Well, in fact, uh, any minute now, we're about to put up a, a new, we're calling it the big board for 2014 with, with who a and looking at, who they already have, uh, who are the guys that are important for them early on in the process. Uh, and that's really where we're going to get started. And then, uh, we've got basketball tonight that we, you know, cover full-time, and college baseball starts next week. So, you know, we're rolling right into the next thing. Outstanding. Aubrey, we appreciate you coming on with us. Thanks very much. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Good to talk to you. Aubrey Brooks from Gigham 24-7 on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.